Hey fellas, today marks the birth of Mew 2. I'm working on my script of Mew Strike Back Evolution, so in the meantime, here is my look at this week's episode of uh, the new series of Pokemon in Japan, and, and entitled Koharu, Yamper, and sometimes Gengar 2. So this episode, Hode as the title implies, is focusing mainly on Koharu's character her and trying to figure out who she is as a person and what she wants to do. I mean, I really don't know how some of the attributes are described how... I'm not sure Colby like words, but I mean, because as I pointed out before, I'm not a big fan of informed attributes or flaws, but... Because they didn't show up at all, but... In this case, it's important given how... She's trying to dispel that stigma herself, I mean, oh, as well as trying to find out who she is, I mean. So I was right about how this one having some feels to it, but not in the way I expected. And I actually like that. Again, the expectations I was not, not really, wasn't really sure about, but still, I like the way they approached this, I mean. And I can use many words to describe this series so far, listless, stuff out one of them. Neither was episode when on top of a Gengar spooking people at the laboratory, there's also oh some involvement with Ash and Go, but also it's mostly about how it's housed with Koharu. Since the scene in the classroom is definitely key. Especially given how her mother, who we found in this episode, is an illustrator, and while she wanted to turn away from this lifestyle that was meeting the professor in her younger days, he was the one that convinced her not to give up on that, that, that way of life. I, I mean, and this also in turn plays a Snukaharu story, trying to find out who she is and what she wants to do at a very formative age. I mean, and her bond with the Amber is basically a, the episode's key story. And in many ways, the whole, whole way it plays in this, it definitely is another example of how it gives off, off a more subtle callback to the earlier days of the series. He's not through familiar monsters or locations, but through a class dynamic. I mean... Sure, we had ones before, like in Generation 5, which I might actually enjoy, but in this case, it's, it's got to be one of the first cases where you know, one of the companions has been taking much longer to establish than the, than the other two. So it starts out with Go being you know, just me, human friend and confidant, and, and I'm very eager to see how Koharu is going to play in this dynamic as well, how this time goes on. And seeing how she will grow and change the course of the series, given how it has easily shaken up the long standing formula once again, has continued to do so each and every time. As I've said before, just because it's going to be here going back to familiar locations, not just the newest ones, doesn't mean hey, that we still can't find new things to share with them. And a lot of people say that it's not just going to be featuring everything you expect. Well, given how they're going to be going back to who who uh, had to Unova after they spent some time in Galar again, it's definitely a new way of looking at the series, which I've been very eager to explore. I mean, and as I say, it, I've been taking it easy this month, not just because of how I've been feeling kind of stiff ever since Sunday, hey, but I would definitely be giving you anything else as it happens. And I've got my, my preliminary script for Ultra Strike Back Evolution at least 45-50% written. And I'll definitely be tweaking that after I watch it on Netflix. And also some new reveal coming on the 27th as well. Still want to opt in to Pokemon Home when I get a chance to when it goes live this month. And I will definitely talk to you all later. Mm, yeah.